Hello, welcome back to Smart Spain, information technology blog. This channel is all about to help you guys understand IT field on practice. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna cover in Python 3 and how we can work on the interactive console on the Windows 10 machine. And if you're interested, stay with me and I'm gonna show you how. And before we're gonna jump into command shell or PowerShell, uh, whatever we call it, uh, I just wanna give you some heads up uh, and small introduction what is a Python Interactive Console means and how it's gonna be beneficial to use it. Uh, the Python Interactive Console, also called a Python Interpreter or a Python Shell, it provides programmers with a quick way to execute commands and try out or testicle without creating a file. Providing access to all the Python building functions and any cell modules, command history, and compilation, the Interactive Console offers the opportunity to explore Python and the ability to paste code into programming files when you are ready. Uh, so, in this story, we'll go over how to work with the Python 3 Interactive Console and leverage it as a programming tool. Uh, Python Interactive Console can be accessed from any local computer or the server with the Python installed on that computer. So the command, the general command will, uh, <clears throat> that you want to use to, the, to enter into the Python Interactive Console uh, is going kind of to be uh, Python and the version of the Python. Or you can just type it in uh, Python inside of your local environment. Um, and by tapping Python, you will be able to access your uh, <coughs> interactive console. So, if you have set up a programming environment, if you don't know how to set up your program on Windows 10, please refer to our previous tutorials video that we have to show you how you can install Python through Windows 10 machine. If you know how to install it and you have already set up your program environment, then you go ahead and <coughs> check this video tutorial as you will be able to using your um, interactive console. So you can launch the environment and access the version of the Python and modules you have installed in that environment by first entering into the into your directory and accessing to your environment. So let me access to my environment so that we can be able to uh, using our interactive console. So first I need to uh, go to my <coughs> directory. So I have to navigate to my environment folder. I have named it environments like I showed you previously. Environments folder. I name my directory environment. And to be able to access my environment, I just copy paste. I don't want to make any typo. So I just my environment script that I have, um, the modules that I have uh, uh, created for my environment and activate your environment. As you may know that already, you just have to type in activate. As you can see, whenever you see your uh, highlighted by green, my environment, I just name it my environment. You can name whatever you want. I guess, like I said, in my case, it's name in my environment, and I'm right now inside of my local environment where I can access my uh, interactive console. So, like I said before, by accessing to your interactive console, you should you should type it in just Python. And whenever you type it in Python, uh, whenever you see <clears throat> uh, uh, kind of like arrow triple arrow it means that you guys right now inside of your interactive console in my case the default version of the Python as you can see is 3.6.3 version which is displayed in the output once once you enter it into command along with the relevant copyright notice and some commands you can type for extra information uh, how you define that inside of your um, interactive console is by whenever you see greater than signs triple it like here 
it means that you right now inside of your interrupting console. Uh, you can target a specific version of Python by appending the version number to your command with no spe specification. You can just type, uh, for instance, instead of just Python, you can type Python the version number. You can access this way too, like Python 2.7. Python 2 or if you're using Python 3 installed on your machine, you can type Python 3 or you can type just Python version. It doesn't matter it's if whenever you spend it right and it's matched to the version that you have installed on your machine, you will be able to access to your interrupted console. Uh, the Python interrupted interpreter accepts Python syntax, which you place followed by this creator mark, science prefixes. We can, for example, assign value to the variables. Let's say, for instance, uh, birth uh, of year. Let's say equal to the, the birthday. Let's say when you that like any number like birth place of birth. Uh, birth of the year, anything. So just I want to show you an example of what I mean by uh, uh, variables value. Once we have assigned the integral value, for instance, 18, 90, 81, any number, in my case I just put 9081, uh, to the variable birth year, we will press return uh, and receive a new line with a tree greater than sign as a prefix. We can continue to sign, assign the variables and then perform math with the operators to get uh, calculation return. Uh, so what I mean by this, just, uh, I'm gonna show you what I mean by this. So let's say uh, birth year is 1981 and uh, let's say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do skeptic, but just, just, it's just as a sample. And that's year, let's say, um, two thousand like uh, fifty six, just any number. Then press enter again, then age at, uh, for instance, that's it's going to be equal this check your spam before uh before typing anything just oh, oh when you finish your typing just check your spam because python is too sensitive language uh for any spelling mistakes year uh, minus verse here right you got it where I mean, right? So, uh, this year minus verse year. Check your spelling one more time. Then hit enter. And uh, I want to see result. To be able to see result, uh, it seems the same if you have created your text file and type it inside of Python text file. At same things, but we're working right inside of the shell of your interrupted console. So we have to just type it in same things like in the Python file. Print, then single open up and add this. H at this. So it's going to calculate for us how low does this person or animal or whatever whatever you refer to just for our case that how long does it was alive from 1981 to 2056 so just doing some basic calculation the same things if you would do this on your calculator manually by typing the script in the file we assign the variables subtracted one variable from other and ask the console to print the variable that represents the difference. Just like in any form of the Python, you can also use the interrupted console as a calculator. Uh, I'm gonna show you how we can, like for instance, divide one number from a different one. So let's say, um, let's say two, 
103, I want to divide it on to 20. And it's going to be calculate right away for you how how much is going to be if you divide it to, to a 3 or 20. It's just a basic calculation. And what I like in the interactive console that you see result right away. You have to save file, you have to log out, uh, <clears throat> uh, log, uh, just log out from your uh, Python script and type it in print result. That's what I like most in, into Python environment that you have type it in command or variable and just see right away result what it's going to be by using interactive console. Multiple lines. Um, when we are writing Python code, the will cover multiple lines. The interpreter will use a secondary prompt for a continuation line like three dots. Uh, to break out of these continuous lines, you will need to press enter twice after you finish command. So we can see what this looks like uh, in the following code that assign two variables and then use a conditional statement to determine what print out to be uh, to the console. So I want to show you what I mean by this. Uh, let's say uh, Alex. No, I'm gonna put just uh, lowercase Alex equal uh, Alex capital then right um, let's uh, <coughs> say boy right Alex boy. Just anything, just just it's just a sample. You can put any variable, variable you want. If um, uh, legs, for instance, uh, Alex. Right? No, no, no. Bit different, sorry, my bad, my mistake. Um, Alex, then reader, then reader, then length of boy. I uh, just smash which word is greater <clears throat> the length by length that's what I mean by this length of boy word and length of Alex word which one is greater which one which one is longer one that's how we determine so after that uh, boy then we have to print uh, It's gonna print resolve such as Alex Just comparison, right? So just comparing. Don't forget check your spelling because it's very crucial on the Python. So, like I said, do you want if you want to see a result, you have to put twice, and it's gonna give you which one is greater. Uh, Alex caught in Java because Alex word is longer than the boy word. It has four words. The boy has three words. It just calculate by lengths. It's pretty useful when you do 
uh, word matching or anything like <clears throat> if you want to find uh, if you want to search for the word but you don't remember exact span of that word for instance but you know how much approximate letter inside of that word you can just type it in by any sample variable and you know it's going to find out by the length of word it's inverting modules um, the Python interpreter provides a quick way for you to check to see if modules are available in specific programming environment. You can do this by using the input statement. Uh, and let me show you what I mean by this. So, um, whenever you type import statement, and let's say uh, Math plot library. Let's say, and it's gonna be trace back on stress and calls, lost files, send line one in modules, uh, modules not found error, no match, name, whatever. It's gonna, it's not found the module. In the case above, the module matplotlab library was not available with the current programming work. In order to install it, we will need to leave the interrupt interpreter and install with a pip as usual. So let's install it, for instance, um, this library. So as you can see that I have um, exited um, my version, uh, my Python, in interrupting environment, not in my virtual one, my interrupting console uh, by exit by exit command uh, as you can see over here, right? So uh, to be able to install Matplot library we need to type the following command uh, pip install matplot library and whenever he enter it's going to be installed on your windows 10 computer just give it some time because it's loaded up and connected to your uh internet sometimes takes a while sometimes depending on your configuration of your computer usually it just takes a minute but it's too no more. Um, once uh, once the uh, math plot library module along with the dependencies are successfully installed, you can go back into interactive interpreter or interactive console, whatever you call it, that's to name it. Uh, I want to mix it up just interactive interpreter or interactive console. Mostly it's used like as an interactive console because it's much easier by uh, the tech world. Uh, for the text savvy guys, usually it's an interactive interpreter. Uh, so whenever it's installed, you can go back to your interactive console. So to go back to your interactive console, like I said before, just type it in Python or Python version or Python 2, Python 3, Python version name, and just hit enter and you will be able to access your interactive console again. So now we can import our Matplot library. Um, import mat <coughs> library. And now we can import it inside into our interrupting console. At this point you will receive no error message and can use install modules under with a shell or wizard file. So um, let's say you want to leave your Python interrupting environment. There are two main ways to leave your Python interrupting console either with a keyword shortcut or Python function. The keyboard shortcut is a Ctrl D in the next base system or Ctrl D and Ctrl Q 
key in the Windows system will interrupt your console and return you to your original terminal window. Alternatively, the pining function quit, which you show me before, will quit out on the interrupted console and also bring you back to the original terminal environment that you were previously in. So, let me show what I mean by. But uh, the main difference, I forgot to tell you that the main difference when you're using the function quit by tapping quit, that's going to be recorded in your history. But whenever you use a shortcut, it's not recording on your history. Whenever you see type, I'm oh, sorry. Type, uh, let's say, uh, quit. Uh, like I showed you before, right? <clears throat> and whenever he enter, it's gonna quit out you from your interrupted console. Pretty much it, guys. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or hit likes, and I'll see you guys in the next part.